we'll start a new topic that is mechanical properties so today we'll uh, discuss on mechanical properties so i want to go to the presentation so as i was telling in the last class knowing mechanical properties is very important for you you being mechanical engineer you are going to design different components devices considering all the all your engineering knowledge and uh, subsequently you will have to think also some about the materials that will be used to you know manufacture the component or the device so uh, you must have to take into consideration all those mechanical properties and their you know how to evaluate the, those mechanical properties that also you have to know uh, as a mechanical engineer so it is very important that you should know all the mechanical properties which are normally used for designing and manufacturing different components or devices so mechanical properties as you have discussed materials can have different properties but the mechanical properties are those properties of the materials that determine its be behavior under applied force so when you are applying some force on the material there will be certain changes in the material and uh, you know depending on different types of materials you can you know observe the different types of changes in the material different uh, values of the different mechanical properties of the material so you should first know how each and every mechanical properties are defined after attending this material science and engineering class uh, when and uh, uh, in future if you are asked about the mechanical properties you should be in a position to explain each and every mechanical properties and also their evaluation how to evaluate and another point is that uh, you must have uh, i don't know whether you have been uh, you know told about the uh, evaluation of some of the mechanical properties in your applied mechanics lab or not or probably you will be uh, taught Um, to evaluate how how to evaluate the mechanical properties so not all but some of the important ones but here theoretically at least you should know all the mechanical properties so what are those mechanical properties some of those mechanical properties you must have studied at your class 2 level in the chapter elasticity so here will be slight extension of those concepts and also we'll add some more mechanical properties the first is elasticity i think i need not have to explain it elasticity because you have already studied this but still let us just glance through on some of the mechanical properties the tendency of solid materials to return to its original shape after being deformed that means when you are loading a material then it will get deformed and after unloading or after removal of the load it comes back to its original position if this type of property is there in a the material then it is called the elastic property or elasticity next comes the toughness you know toughness actually combines strength of the material and and ductility strength and ductility if you combine strength and ductility in a material it is called toughness and it is defined as the ability of a material to absorb energy plastically without fracturing 
so how to evaluate toughness that we will also see and some more explanations are also there here i will uh, here i am just uh, defining the material very shortly briefly then comes the brittleness a material is brittle when subjected to stress it breaks without significant deformation so you should you know uh, once you look at a material if you if you know some material you should be in a position whether material is brittle or ductile that you should be able to guess and when you want to exactly evaluate the material definitely some experimental methods are there to evaluate the properties of the material next comes the stiffness it is it is the rigidity of an object then comes malleability malleability is the ability of a material to be deformed into thin sheets that means when you are applying some compressive force on a piece of material and it is converted into a thin sheets then that particular material is called the malleability that property is called the malleability then comes creep creep the slow and gradual deformation of an object with respect to time point is that this creep is very very important suppose if you you have applied a constant force a constant force on a material and if you keep it for a long time it may so happen that with the passage of time the material is getting deformed it may not be for all the materials but there are some materials which exhibits this type of uh, phenomena which is known as creep then comes the ductility of the material it is defined as the material ability to be stressed into a uh, wear so you should be able to differentiate between malleability and ductility almost similar but there is a slight difference in their concept the ductility is the ability of the material to be stretched into a uh, wear these are some standard definitions the plasticity ability of the material to undergo irreversible deformation that means when you are applying like plastic material plastic means when you are just uh, applying some force it will be deformed and it will not come back to its original shape so that uh, uh, property is called the plasticity then comes the resilience ability of a material to absorb energy when it is deformed elastically and releases that energy upon unloading this is called the resilience then shear modulus in a shear modulus you must have studied at your plus 2 level when there are there is certain shearing strain you know you know what is shearing strain so so according to hooke's law as if you define shear modulus then it will be just just uh, shear stress divided by shear strain we will uh, see it again then shear strain this is this is this, this is the maximum stress of a material that we can which it can withstand when you are applying a shearing force or shearing stress then comes the tensile strain when you are applying a normal tensile strain then the maximum tensile stress that a material can withstand before fracture it is called the tensile strain then you have got the yield strength this it is the strength of the material when the material starts plastically deform so yield strength or yield point is a very very important uh, design criteria when you when you are going to design the material normally this strength yield strength is taken and then you considering the factor of safety you determine the working strength of the material and considering that working strength you design the different dimensions of the component of the device then comes the young modulus you know when you are applying the longitudinal load or stress the ratio of the stress to strain is known as young modulus then fracture toughness fracture toughness this is uh, this is a measure of toughness this is a measure of toughness so uh, it is defined as the 
Yes. Uh, why uh, desalescence is uh, important in materials? Which one? Desalescence. Design stress because design C when you are going to design a material, you must have to the different material has got designs uh, different uh, you know yield point. Different material has got different yield points. So suppose you are going to design a gear per gear. What happens normally with a cast iron as a material? So cast iron has got definite yield point. Again, you have got different cast iron. So different cast iron has got different you know yield point. So unless you consider the yield point, you consider the yield strength or yield point of the cast iron and that is evaluated experimentally and this yield strength is taken as the uh, as the design criteria but this is to be concert, uh, converted into working strength by considering factor of safety see all these things will be taught to you if you are you have not been taught yet because how to design a, a material how to select a material and how to take into consideration that strength of the material all these things will be taught to you so yield strength divided by factor of safety is equal to your working strength which is taken for designing the material the details will be taught to you if you have been not not told yet the fracture okay. toughness fracture toughness the energy absorbed per unit area you see toughness we have already defined so uh, we will see under stress strain diagram the area under the stress strain diagram for any this strain car is known as the toughness but fracture toughness is defined as the energy absorbed per unit area the whole area is to be divided into you know uh, unit area uh, i mean the total energy divided by the total area is called the uh, area per unit energy absorbed per unit area and that is the measure of toughness which is known as fracture toughness then comes the hardness is one of the very very important uh, mechanical property and there are different ways to determine hardness we will explain there are different there are brinell hardness method then you know rock oil noob then you have got the hickers so then you have also have got the nano indentation so so many different types of uh, methods are there to de uh, determine the hardness of the material this is a very very important material so hardness is defined as the ability to withstand the scratch or indentation of the material so how how strongly it resists the scratch or indentation that is the ability of the material that which is defined as the hardness next comes the compressive strength the stress that a material can withstand before com uh, compressive failure that means when you are applying compressive strength load can be compressive or tensile or torsional any type of load can be there on the material but when you are applying say compressive strength then the failure due to compressive strength is known as the uh, so failure due to compressive load is known as the compressive strength next comes the fatigue 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 is another very very important property fatigue means uh, when you are applying some you know load fluctuating load repeated lo loading you know there can be uh, you know increase and decrease it may you know cyclically changes if the stress the material changes cyclically or in some form there is a variation in the applied load then the material's ability to resist or uh, resist failure actually reduces this also will be discussing in detail how to evaluate the fatigue load and how it depends on the you know number of cycles all these things will be discussing so fatigue limit is the maximum stress of the material which it can withstand under repeated loading or cyclic loading that means when the load is changing load is not constant then the materials gets fatigue and it is it fails it fails quite early that is the point suppose you are applying a constant load of certain value 
and uh, you are trying to find out what is the failure point but when the, and if you are applying a cyclic loading then by applying a quite small quantity of cyclic loading the material may fail so this is the point you know fatigue is a very very in the matrix everywhere you, any you consider any dynamic system a dynamic device which is moving then obviously in that material there is a uh, loading which is varying so you must have to take into consideration the fatigue design how to how to design the material considering fatigue loading or the cyclic loading so this is very very important and all these points these are also very very important because almost all the components we design uh, majority of the components you know mechanical components uh, you know works under dynamic loading so this is a very very important point so this is thus name and basic idea of the uh, mechanical different mechanical properties now we will go to elaborate all these mechanical properties but before that let us see this slide let us understand the elastic and plastic deformation the material deforms under load and this deformation can be classified into two form two types elastic deformation and plastic deformation and here is the diagram and with the help of this diagram we try to understand see in the first diagram suppose you have applied a load in the in the in the first diagram there is no loading in the first diagram there is no loading here we are discussing about elastic deformation no loading and in the second diagram we have applied a small load so what is happening is that if you look into the material deep into the material structure as all of you know that it is basically the arrangement of the atoms within within the material which forms the bulk material so when you are applying a load then what happens the the bond stretches the bond gets stretched so the length the length of the material increases so there is this total increase in length which is denoted by this delta and this is a very microscopic view which has been enlarged and if you consider the whole material the whole material gets stretched so we are getting the total delta here because of the increase in the length of the bonds so the cumulative value in the increase of the lengths of the bond actually gives you the total increase and this is the total delta is the total increase or the deformation now what happens since the load is small comparatively small and no, we have not loaded is beyond the yield point that is very important that means we are within the proportional limit we are within the proportional limit so what will happen upon removal of the load that the material will come back to its initial position or it will return to its initial position after unloading so this delta will not be there after unloading so the strain strain or deformation will be equals to zero after unloading so this is elastic deformation which has been shown diagrammatically so atoms returns to their original position and say elastic means it is a irreversible process so when you are deforming it comes back to its original position on the other hand if you see the plastic deformation so what will happen here you are applying a load which is more than the yield strength yield strength we will see in the stress strain diagram yield strength so we are applying a large load what will happen this is to be noted here you see the atoms atoms will slip atoms will slip how it will deform this deformation material deformations uh, we will also discuss when we will discuss about the crystal structure and the material deformation there it will be clear but for the time being you just see that there will be certain planes you know we'll, in the crystal structure we will be discussing about the different planes and directions so there will be certain planes along with the the you know materials will deform because 
along that particular uh, plane the force required to deform the material or the deform the material will be less now how, in which along which direction it will be less that will also will also be discussing while we will be discussing about the crystal geometry and crystal structure so those planes are actually called the slip planes those planes are called slip planes so along the slip planes material actually slides so atoms moves so in this diagram you see the middle middle one so the atoms have actually slipped by one position here just to explain it one position so there is a permanent deformation point is that there is a permanent deformation the materials are slip because you have applied the load uh, more than the yield point so the total deformation in the material or total uh, change in the length you see it will be elastic plus plastic there will be elastic as well as plastic so this total deformation upon application of the load but when you are removing the load what will happen the elastic because of the elastic part this elastic uh, delta delta elastic will be not there but there will be only plastic deformation so this will this will be a permanent deformation there will be permanent deformation upon removal of the load so point to be noted is that when you are applying load beyond the ill point definitely you will get a permanent deformation in the material so this is the plastic deformation so shape of the material gets changed and atoms are permanently displaced from their positions original positions so plastic deformation means the permanent deformation so these are the basic two deformation uh, deformation of the material when you are applying the load so this sir, stress sir. Thing, yes sir after the removal of the load will the delta L yes it will not be restored sir in that in this uh, plastic deformation the delta elastic will be restored and the delta plastic will not be restored after the removal of the load which was applied ah did i again tell me again sir i am telling that uh, in plastic deformation this delta after the removal of this load f after being elongated i just remove this load capital f then ah. the delta elastic will be restored and the delta plastic will not be restored no 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 del see total here in the uh, second diagram second diagram is when you have applied the load load is applied here then this total delta consist of delta elastic plus delta plastic now when you are removing the load what will happen this elastic part elastic means you know always it is a reversible process reversible that means it comes to its original position so because of the elastic delta elastic uh, uh, you know uh, this deformation delta elastic this will be equal to zero after removal of load because it is because of the uh, you know elasticity elastic property means it will be uh, it, it 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 comes back to its original position so delta elastic will be zero and only the plastic portion will be there as permanent deformation acha okay okay sir so next comes the stress strain relationship now although you have studied this at your plus 2 level you should now think about the stress strain relationship for different types of materials you see you will not only use the mild steel and cast iron you may use some plastic materials or some other materials maybe aluminum maybe you know some other metal alloy so for those materials in you know, a stress strain diagram will be different in experiment in uh, applied mechanics lab you know you will be using a specimen mild steel or i don't know whether you have used mild steel just to give you an idea about stress strain relationship but you will not only use mild steel but also you will be using cast iron you may use other uh, ferrous materials non ferrous materials so for different material you should have some idea about the stress strain diagram of the material so that you can guess you know guess about the mechanical property of the material that is important so i need not have to explain what is strain and strain but here we should uh, you know know about the two points 
we 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 define the stress and strain into two categories one is called the engineering stress and strain and another was true stress and strain you know we have two concepts about the stress and strain one is based on the engineering concept and another we call the actual actual stress and strain and uh, the engineering stress is taken while designing a component and the second is important for manufacturing so both the concepts are required to know so let us see how we differentiate between this engineering stress and true stress now engineering stress is defined as you know low applied load divided by the actual area actual area or original area of the test specimen that means before deformation what will happen is that when you load the material the material will increase in length and it will decrease in its diameter so cross sectional area will get reduced so that reduction we do not take into consideration when we are defining engineering stress we take only load divided by original area so this is the concept of engineering stress but if you define the true stress what will happen you will have to take into consideration the load at a particular moment divided by the true area at that particular moment so there should be a provision to measure the actual area at that particular point of time and definitely the area will be less so obviously at a particular point of application of load your true stress will be more than your engineering stress so that is the idea so let us see now this is the this is a process by which we try to evaluate the different properties of the material we take a we we basically perform a very simple test called the tensile test and uh, we try to understand the stress strain diagram and by that actually we are able to determine the other properties of the materials let us see how so what is done is that a an specimen is a specimen is taken the circular specimen with certain length and then load is applied and we note down different uh, things so obviously when you are applying the load the cross sectional area area gets reduced and in our you know tensile test testing device you will find that you will you may get directly the stress strain diagram and also you will get the the idea of the elastic modulus and all that so all these things can be done in the tensile test uh, method so tensile test specimen it is like this and there is a two points which take we take as l0 the length of the material and there are certain uh, you know standard uh, dimensions of this specimen according to astm so that is taken as the test specimen then we apply this is the tensile test setup we you know uh, held we 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 actually place this uh, specimen here between the two ends and uh, there is a provision for you know uh, placing this material here and we try to apply the load there are other uh, accessories also that is not shown uh, shown here only the idea has been given so this is the specimen and then this uh, load is applied slowly and the material gets uh, deformed it gets increase in length you know and the different uh, and, the, and the, the we get the stress strain diagram directly there is a provision i don't know in in our laboratory that provision is there it should be there in our uh, lab also so once you get the stress strain diagram then you can know the elastic modulus you know what is toughness you can have that idea about the ductility of the material 
then heel strain a proportional limit elastic point all these you know mechanical properties uh, you can determine so similar to your engineering strain uh, stress you have got the engineering strain concept of engineering strain so here also we take define the engineering strain as the strain uh, you know we consider the original length so change in length as you get the l minus l0 divided by original length so this is the engineering stress uh, a strain engineering strain so elastic region you know hooke's law and you don't have to explain because you know what is hooke's law you have studied in detail in your plus 2 level young modulus also you know so what i am doing elastic my stress by strength that is not important yield strength is very important let us now see here tensile strength of a material which particular stress you take as the measure of tensile strength that is important because here you will be different point you will have the proportional limit another point then you have got the elastic point then you have got the yield point the three important points we have so if you look at this diagram you see there will be a point up to which the material will follow the hooke's law material will follow the hooke's law so stress will be proportional to strain that particular point is called the proportional limit then there is beyond that particular point there is a point in between the yield point and the proportional limit that is called the elastic limit so there is another point there is a very small difference between all these point but yield point is definitely you know for a you know material like mild steel this yield point can be defined definitely uh, you know marked so for any material for any material when you are talking about the tensile strain it indicates the yield point strain it indicates the yield point strain not elastic a uh, limit or uh, proportional limit tensile strain indicates the yield point strain that means when the plastic deformation in the material starts so this is the you know tensile strain and you see here how to find out then point is that how to find out this yield point how to find out this yield point there is a uh, you know there is a process what what is taken is that in the horizontal axis which is strain we take 0.2% we take 0.2% of the strain 0.2% means in absolute term it comes 0.002 and we locate this particular point and we try to draw a parallel line this is a standard procedure by which we find out the yield point of a material so once we have find, found out this particular point at 0.2% strain we draw a parallel line we draw a parallel line and this line intersects the diagram twist and curve at a point and we project this uh, you know point to the y axis which gives us the yield strength or tensile strength of the material is it clear yes, yes sir in making the key sir making the pore aschi making the to pore aschi so so this is a very important point you should remember how to find out the yield strength or the tensile strength of the material we can find out the tensile strength again i am repeating because it is important once you get the stress strain diagram you must have to locate 0.2% strain or in absolute term 0.002 and draw a parallel line so this line will intersect the stress strain diagram at some point and locate that particular point and from this point you draw a horizontal line and you will get a point stress here you will get a stress which is denoted by sigma y which will give you yield strength or yield point or tensile strength of the material 
because this is the this is the you know strength or this is the stress value which is taken into consideration for designing designing the material so this is a very very important uh, measurement you should remember this now you see here is a diagram suppose you are taking suppose you are taking a ductile material like mild steel and if you perform if you perform tensile test on that specimen some uh, interesting observations are there what will be the nature of fracture actually all these points you, you will be uh, taught in your strength of materials subject but just here i want to mention that there will be a fracture so at the fracture point you know cross section area will get reduced and there will be fracture so there will be localized deformation of a ductile material during tensile test in the neck region necking will be formed you will see in the diagram next diagram so this type of fracture is called cup and cone fracture cup and cone fracture it is because if you look at this normally what will happen is that at uh, you know 45 degree angle actually all these stress strain diagram and all these things will be taught in your strength of material class so at 45 degree angle you will find that the shear stress shear stress will be maximum and the failure will take place along that particular plane for certain ductile material like mild steel so there will be a cup and cone formation and this actually you will be shown in your laboratory so you need not have to worry about if you have not done you will be uh, doing the experiment so that is called the cup and cone fracture that has been shown here but if the material is brittle material the fracture or the nature of you know this deformation will be completely different there will be no cup and cone formation there will be no slip in it will just break like that if you take a brittle material like cast iron so the stress strain diagram let us now take now this is this is this stress, stress strain diagram is for aluminium alloy you know one important is mild Sir? steel let me yes the carbon fracture to basically could have observed hey 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 let's see this diagram let's see this diagram we are taking in a specimen mild steel and we are increasing the load so stress will increase initially up to this point let us say this is a proportional limit proportional limit up to stress uh, up to proportional limit stress is proportional to strain and there will be curvature in the stress strain diagram and here is the maximum upper yield point you will find here upper yield point then material will start yielding yielding means some deformation will take place you see there will be making this particular you know when the cross sectional area in the specimen is decreasing that is called the necking so when necking takes place obviously since we have the constant load cross sectional area is decreasing the stress is more so material will you know deform more so what will happen what will happen that after certain this is of course different uh, this thing after certain uh, time what will happen the material cannot sustain that load so it will break and uh, it will break so actually here i have not shown the stress strain diagram for mild steel there will be definitely uh, some yield point here but here in aluminium alloy you see you cannot uh, clearly uh, differentiate the yield point although there is a elastic limit we have here but there is a no elastic uh, yield point that is the speciality of you know materials like aluminium because it is ductile material so for ductile material for uh, uh, very ductile material you know the uh, finding yield point is quite difficult but for mild steel we will get clearly the yield point upper yield point as well as lower yield point so this is also another diagram this is also uh, this is also 
uh, stress strain diagram some not for mild steel i cannot say this mild steel because there is no say the ill point so this is a sort of ductile material so this also gives you the idea see at this is the point this is the point we call this is the uh, ill point here we cannot classify so when you have got the stress strain diagram with you you can have so many measures so many measures we are just let's see you have got the elastic region plastic region it is qu uh, quite clear then up to this point 2 starting from point 1 to point 2 this is the elastic region and here stress is proportional to strain so up to this point this we take as ill strain this point we take as ill, ill strain because there is no clear cut division between and the demarcation between the proportional limit elastic limit and uh, your ill point so for this type of material these are uh, we take uh, almost same so this point 2 we take as ill point then the material further loading on the material the material enters into the plastic region so plastic deformation starts and this stress diagram you know looks like this so there will be a point let us say point 3 where your stress will be maximum so this is called ultimate tensile strain this is also an important measure sigma y and sigma uts both are important if sigma y is not given for some material you must be you know this uts must be given so uts can also be taken as a design criteria so uts is the ultimate tensile strain which gives the maximum stress on the stress strain diagram maximum stress the topmost point next comes further increase on further increase on uh, the specimen what will happen the necking will take place necking will take place so the stress will get reduced and uh, at a certain point let us say at point 5 the material is not able to sustain the load so the material will get fractured at this particular point this point is called the fracture strain so if see here we are getting so many measures one is called the ill strain for some material can be proportional strain or elastic strain and also another measure is the ultimate tensile strain and finally is the fracture strain so these are all different measures but out of these measures you know at different points different uh, you know value for design you see as we are telling for designing uts and sigma y sigma uts and sigma y are very very important sometimes for manufacturing we may be more interested in fracture strain that means when the material permanently get, permanently get, permanently permanently gets uh, you know fractured or sometimes we may be interested in the uh, you know ill strain so at different areas different properties will be important that is to be and that is to be you know known properly so that the proper design can be done or proper material selection can be carried out so this is one explanation sir, next sir tahole sir point to point g point to person je line de jeta tanche seta ki sir ei slope e koi je lal protom dotted line ta ota our look at sigma by let me go to let me go to that see ekhane o seta bola jay so you see suppose for aluminum i want to find out yield strength aluminum at experimental point uh, these uh, dots are gives gives your experimental values for different strain and stress the dot point will get put over the stress can i sustain can i point will i pabo now you see if you have got a device where stress strain diagram can be plotted directly no problem otherwise what you have to do you have to take temporal reading like each of these points indicate the Stress divided by strain. So for a particular load, we have to know what is the strain and take the value 
So we will get the space and strain this point. Strain, space and strain. We will have to take these values and we will plot the points so that you will get this system diagram. Once you have plotted, then you take the strain value equals to 0 0.002, absolute value, or in percentage it will be 0.2 percent. So once you have located this point, you draw a parallel line, nearly parallel line to the you know, uh, elastic line or linear the line which is linear. You see here almost it will be linear. So this is the parallel line. It, it cuts to cuts the original system diagram at this particular point. So if you project this here on the y-axis, this particular value will give you the steel span of the material. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hello. Hey, somebody asked some question. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So here in this slide, we will try to understand, you know, this distant diagram is a very, very important diagram to give you some idea about the mechanical properties of the material. Let us understand. We are taking some uh, different types of material. Let us see the, the, the blue line first, which has the maximum slope. This blue line has got a maximum slope. So this is a brittle material. Why it is brittle material? Because brittle material will have minimum strain before fracture. Brittle material will have minimum strain before fracture. Example, diamond or glass or chalk or some concrete. So these are brittle materials. We are going to try to draw this in diagram. We will just get a linear line like this. Now, the maximum value. Now, another point. For this between material, there will be no elastic limit or yield point or something like that. It will be just a linear line. And it will have the maximum slope. And if you consider that perfectly pretty material, let us say, then obviously the stress diagram just will be the y axis. If the material has got no, no strain for application of load, the perfectly uh, material, then, or sometimes we say perfectly rigid material for deformation, then it will be just y axis. But let us consider for practical purposes of glass. The amount of strain will be very small, and the stress strain diagram will be linear. There will be no ill point. So this is the breaking strain at this particular point the material breaks. So from here you can find out the, the slope. That means can theta. You can suppose this angle is theta. Then can theta will be your elastic modulus. And uh, at this point you can find out what is the breaking strain. And you see area under this curve from this suppose breaking point, this point if you drop line on the horizontal line this area will be a triangle so this area under this curve as you have defined the toughness it will be quite small so the indication is that the material has got no toughness low toughness it has got no e point is very Pain deformation is very small. So these are some of the characteristics of this material material which can be very, very can be explained by this system diagram very easily. Now let us come to another material uh, drawn in red color, this graph. It is a strong material which is not ductile. Not ductile means it is also brittle, but slight you know deformation is there at the top. So this is also a brittle material because it has broken here and there is no in point, you know, very strong materials like wrought iron, you know, wrought iron, then uh, that type of material, the steel wear stress very little and break suddenly. So actually this is not the stress diagram, although it is written still, 
or it is not the diagram of steel uh, of uh, actual steel because steel will have some ductility in points and all those but we consider this as a brittle material now next come to this green curve this is a very important uh, normal curve so this is this we consider as the test diagram of mild steel mild steel mean mild amount of carbon the less amount carbon in steel in iron and of course this slope this is just an indication slope will be uh, you know depending on this from this slope we can get the elastic point now obviously the area under this curve up to this toughness the toughness is more so if you compare the all the diagrams in terms of their mechanical properties you can easily compare so here also you will get you have got the proportional limit you have got the in point upper in point lower in point you have got the maximum strength here you have the breaking strength here so all these you know mechanical properties all these values stress values you can find out from the test and diagram on as it is known and now uh, very sophisticated devices are available where we can get these uh, you know measurements very easily so evaluating this mechanical properties is not Uh, very difficult. Very, uh, we can easily evaluate this mechanical property. Next, come to the fourth diagram. You see, this is in violet color. So, uh, this is a plastic material. It is very. You have applied a very small load, and the formation is quite large. And you are getting a. So obviously, this is a plastic material. So plastic deformation will be there. There will be no elastic part here. Very small elastic part. You can consider this part as elastic. Very small elastic part. So this is the plastic deformation, plastic material. So these are the four extreme types of diagrams. In general, we have drawn to explain the different features. So here you can find out the. You can compare the toughness. You can compare the strength. you can compare the proportional limit you can compare the ultimate tensile strength so all mechanical properties you can compare uh, for different materials once you get this test and diagram so this idea uh, this 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 should be uh, clear to you to have an idea about all mechanical properties of different materials so ductile je material ta ache okane making ta fracture er age hoy to fracture er age hoy obviously yes okay स्कीप कर True stress. Yes. Now, uh, let us let us come to. We have we have defined engineering stress, engineering strain, about true stress. True stress. Why the concept of true stress comes? As we have said, the true stress are important because we try to find out the actual stress at a particular point of time. so actual or instantaneous area may be used instead of original area the test is facing to calculate the true stress no engineering hobe na eta ekhane bhul lekha hoyeche so it will be true stress actual area becomes increasingly smaller as the test specimen proceed test proceeds if the actual area is used then calculated value will be higher so this is the expression which i was saying true stress equals to force Actual force divided by actual area. Now, strain. Ta jodi, if we want to find out strain, strain at a particular point, we want to find out. Then this is the expression of true strain. Now, true strain. So strain, as usual, at a particular point of time, d l by l. We know this is the strain. Now we will have to take into consideration the initial value till the final value. So if we integrate this expression we will get the value of true strain 
So this comes out to the ln of L divided by L naught. So this is the expression of true strain. And if you want to see the true stress, uh, true strain, stress strain curve, it will be slightly different. Initially, it will be same. Let us say up to proportional limit or yield point. Then, in the plastic region, after start of making, after start of making, the green line actually shows the uh, engineering stress, but True stress, what will happen? True stress will be larger. So from here, this dotted line, the dotted line that has been shown, it becomes the true strain. But in 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 normally drawing the stress strain diagram, we actually do not draw the true stress strain curve, rather we draw the engineering stress strain diagram. So that is why our diagram actually becomes like this. But truly, after making since the cross-sectional area is getting reduced, what will happen? The stress will go on increasing and it, it will increase in the failure of the material. So, this is the difference. So, this dotted line actually indicates the true stress strain diagram. Starting from here, till we are going up to this point, start of making. And if we go uh, along the dotted line, we are actually getting the true stress strain diagram. So this is the difference between the true stress strain diagram and engineering stress strain diagram. So there is a there is a concept there is a concept called strain hardening. There is a concept called strain hardening because when some material is deformed, so when the material is get is deformed, what will happen? the material gets hardened the strength of the material increases that is why in manufacturing this concept strain hardening is very very important and it is because uh, this uh, see uh, stronger means uh, uh, this actually strain hardening it is because of this concept that is called the true a uh, true stress strain uh, diagram so uh, because the strength of the material is getting increased the stress of the material getting increased after making so that actually is there in the material that means some inherent or residual stress in the material will be involved there will be see after making some deformation is taking place and some stress is developed in the material and the material is getting suddenly you know fractured so there will be certain strain all involved in the material so because of that the material becomes hardened so material becomes you know more you know materials uh, will have some higher strain so that is how it is called the strain hardening materials become more harder or will have more strength because of that phenomenon. So strain hardening or work hardening is an important factor in certain manufacturing process, particularly when you are uh, performing some metal forming operations. So that is why when you are performing some metal forming operations like forging or uh, you know drawing so there will be different uh, manufacturing processes where we perform the metal forming and definitely in that material there will be certain strain hardening or residual stresses in the material and if in some material there are certain residual stresses what happens the materials i know uh, materials residual stresses are not actually expected it should not be there in, in the material otherwise the material will be weaker it can fail early. So, after this uh, metal forming, normally what is done? Some heat treatment process are, processes are followed, like annealing, normalizing, and other heat treatment processes are followed to remove the residual stresses or strain hardening of the materials. 
the strain hardening hardening although materials are becoming harder but that is not expected it, it works against the material properties so we try to remove the strain hardening phenomenon in the material so the methods of removing this residual stresses or strain hardening is heat treatment so heat treatment process is also will be starting so uh, this is the log log plot of stress strain diagram actually the uh, actually the true stress diagram stress strain actual stress strain diagram looks like this this is the equation this is the equation this is called the uh, equation is called the flow curve of solid material sigma equals to k into a to the power n here we have got the two constant k and n so stress and strain for different materials are related by this graph now since we have got a large range of materials the value of k and n are to be separately determined from experimental observations say if, if, if we want to find out the true strain and st true stress and true strain for uh, at a particular um, point for mild steel for mild steel then we definitely have to find out that we will take into consideration the experimental value then it can be easily done you see if you take the logarithm on both sides this equation will be a linear equation and by a method of curve fitting there is a method called curve fitting there is a method called curve fitting by that we can estimate what will be the value of k and n so for that particular material we can always find out what will be the value of k and n so at a particular strain what will be the true stress that we can calculate so that is why this equation is very important to find out the true stress and true strain now these are some of the relationship i you might be knowing so if it is a per perfectly elastic material you see like the brittle material it will be diagram will be something like this straight line simple straight line straight is pro proportional to strain then elastic and perfectly plastic materials that means this is theoretically you can say a material cannot have this type of you know drastic change in elastic and plus this is theoretical curve just to give you an idea so this is this is the elastic portion this is the plastic portion so this is from this point material suddenly becomes perfectly plastic and below this it is perfectly elastic practically this type of material uh, artificially it can be manufactured but uh, normally it doesn't happen like that next elastic and strain hardening so elastic then upon application of strain or load the material stress is increasing that means material is getting strain hardened the residual stresses are there within the material so next we are coming to another type of test that is called the compression test it is just like your uh, tensile test but this only thing is that we apply the load in the reverse direction that of tensile so compressive load we are applying here this is similar type of test we perform to evaluate the compressive strength so similar type of concepts are there engineering stress in compression hello okay so this is similar concept to your tensile test not much difference is there so i am just you go through if you have any clarification we can discuss otherwise just i will skip these points similar uh, so tensile and compressive test next shear properties you know shearing stress shearing strain shear modulus this idea you have yes Here are some of the points uh, shearing stress here in strain this you have studied next let me explain hardness a bit detail 
hardness is important so as you have already defined hardness as the ability of the material to resist you know indentation or permanent deformation uh, permanent indentation or scratch that is the definition of hardness now point is how to evaluate hardness what are the different methods of evaluating hardness so we have different hardness test like most commonly used are for bulk material material of larger volume commonly used methods are brinell hardness rock oil hardness so this definitely will be performing these experiments and when you are going to use in a mat mat microscopic view, uh, you know way then you use the vickers or no pin then vickers and no pin later we have the our experiment in our experiment is that of this vickers and no pin then and nowadays people talking about material characterization at nano scale so we have got the nano indentation no, nano indentation means you will apply a very small load you know nowadays you are uh, going towards the nano structure nano devices so if you are going to evaluate the materials character uh, characteristics at nano scale you know you must have to use the different types of devices so for that we have nano indentation using the nano indentation we can evaluate the all mechanical proper properties so there is a device if you are interested you can just have a look on nano indentation you can get it in your net so these are the you know methods by which you can evaluate the hardness of the material so most common is brinell hardness test what is done is this is the specimen test specimen and we have got a spherical indenter spherical ball this is the indenter indenter means it is pressed against the material and we try to find out the area area of the indentation or the projected area better to say projected area so this is the diameter of the indentation once we know the diameter we can find out what is this area so load divided by this area will give you the brinell hardness number it is basically the stress because force divided by area we are doing here the so basic stress but it is not written as stress but some values are given so there are certain values uh, if you want to compare the hardness of the material then you will take different material and try to find out the brinell hardness number and compare at what range whether what is the range of the hardness in which range it is there whether material is very hard middle or in between or soft like that you can have an idea so this is the most common one and this is the formula for that if you convert the uh, force divided by the projected area it will be like this so it is it is called the hb number it is hb number this bhn a brinell hardness number it is also denoted by hb hb number hardness number a brinell hardness number it is uh in short it is written as hp number or bhn number so this is the expression of bhn number you must be using it to calculate the brinell hardness number then you have got the rock oil hardness number here the difference is that your indenter is you know a cone shape there is a uh, pointed portion the indenter is cone cone shape and there is certain penetration some uh, you know processes are there to perform this indentation so once we know the depth of indentation we uh, find out with the help of this here actually we here also we try to find out the area in terms of d so here calculation is slightly slightly complicated compared to other one because you have to find out the area because the indentation will be cone shaped accordingly but that is to be converted you know that area can be converted in terms of d it's a standard formula so if divided by 
d square into some constant will be there. So that formula I have not written here, but that means if you know f and d and put into this formula, you will get that Rockel hardness number. So this is another way of measuring the hardness. Now here is a just graph which gives you the idea of how the mechanical property changes with respect to temperature because sometimes it may happen that the component which you have designed may work in adverse condition where the temperature is high. So temperature as the temperature increases obviously the tensile strength, yield strength all the material goes down and that will be increased. It is from the common sense you can you know, guess that if temperature increases then the strength and ductility, you know, strength and you know, tensile strength and yield strength decreases, ductility increases. So bonding actually gives you the idea of elasticity. So this is you know, I'm not discussing here. Then another point is hot hardness. So the hardness is a very important property. So you know hardness also gets changed with with respect to temperature. So as you increase the temperature, hardness of the material decreases. So here, why here some uh, different types of materials like ceramic, high alloy steel, high carbon steel, low carbon steel. So for all the materials, you know, hardness decreases with increase of temperature. Hot hardness. Now, let us come to this toughness, which I was telling. The toughness is a very, very important again very important material toughness so we have already defined toughness toughness is defined as the area under the stress strain curve and it is the measure of stress strain uh, toughness so you see here we have got two material and uh, this is let us consider although it is between it is written brittle in between material this curvature will not be there it is it, it is not correctly drawn it should be like a linear graph only there will be no curvature there may be a slight curvature in between material uh, so theoretically the between material should not have any curvature it will be completely linear so let us assume that it is a linear graph so this is a between material material b no this point b and another material that is ductile, the ductile material definitely will have more strength compared to your between material. So, if we want to compare the toughness between these two materials, one is brittle and ductile, obviously the ductile material will have more area under this stress strain diagram. This is the area, this area. So, this material will absorb more energy much more energy before fracture so toughness is the energy absorbed by the material before fracture so this energy is much higher compared to your brittle material so this is how we can compare the toughness of different materials how will you measure just toughness equals to you know integration of sigma B epsilon. Basically, we are finding out this area from zero to fracture epsilon. What is the epsilon value? That means, let us say for this ductile material. Sir, it toughness to the energy by volume or something. Now, toughness to which toughness is the energy absorbed before fracture. Energy absorbed before fracture, which we can get from this stress-strain diagram by this equation. Equation take I mean, if I know this graph, it is mean, a smooth continuous curve, let us say, for drawing. So, so, you say sigma is a function of epsilon here. I will put it here. Actually, see, I can find out what will be the uh, sigma expression once we use this. Uh, I have shown you now one diagram. Let me let me go to that true stress strain diagram. let me show you that this is a diagram so if you want to find out the toughness i need this expression sigma is a function of epsilon you have to collect the data you have to find out k and n so you get 
the function sigma sigma is a function of epsilon once you know that then you put it here in the toughness equation once you put it here in the toughness equation and if you know the strain at this particular value then you can find out what will be the toughness toughness is the energy absorbed energy absorbed uh, till the uh, uh, till the material fails yeah. okay so it take our fracture toughness if we say fracture toughness it a per unit volume we can compare that not that toughness is the energy per unit volume yes it has to lekha yache but in general we'll define define like that it is the material ability to absorb the energy before fracture so toughness as i told you i have told you earlier it is the combination of strength and ductility toughness a tough material will have both strain strength as well as it should be ductile like if it is brittle material is brittle then obviously its ductility is less so it will be low in toughness so if a material is having more toughness so it will have to have some ductility property and also it will have higher strength strength in the sense yield strength so strain plus ductility will give you the toughness now there is a method by which toughness can be you know evaluated this is called the impact test this this you should also do in your laboratory so impact test by which impact uh, this impact test there are different methods common is charpy test and iser test i don't know which particular test will be carried out here in your lab but uh, both the tests are used iser test commonly used so what is done here is standard type of specimen are manufactured with a notch let us see so this is the specimen by which experiment will be carried out this is a specimen and here will be a notch there will be cut here v cut there will be notch this notch will be v shape or e hole type so different types of notch can be there the standard dimensions are there and how it is done just see this diagram so what is done is that here the material is placed at the on this anvil and uh, the this pendulum hammer this pendulum hammer is you know taken to a certain height with reference to the specimen so h height and then it is released from here it is released from here it strikes it and it breaks and then it goes up to this point so obviously this uh, you know difference in this potential energy you know, this is the difference in potential energy of the uh, hammer actually goes into the uh, material it uh, goes into uh, it is used to you know fracture or break the material so from there we can actually calculate there are certain formula for that we can calculate what is the toughness of the material so this is one method this is called the charpy impact test this is called the charpy impact test so there are i have not you know you will call this i have not written the formula you will do it in your lab just here i want to give you the idea only so here is the iser test the left hand side the iser test the apply the load just behind the notch and uh, and in iser test what we do we, we actually uh, hold the material like this and we apply the load in this direction so this is the test specimen and the load is applied on the same side of the v notch so this is the difference so we we'll have to see which particular you know, testing device is there in our lab so this is the iso test difference between iso test and charpy test so other points i am not just now here is one slide just to give you an idea 
about the two important mechanical properties strength and toughness and a wide range of material you see we have got the ceramic materials we have glass we have polymers metals and alloys composite materials we have rubbers foams so this will give you an idea depending on your practical use which particular type of material you are going to select for particular applications because for certain you know device you require some value of strain some value of you know toughness depending on that you may have to select a material so this will give you some idea about which particular material is to be used of course not only strength and toughness there will be certain other criteria sir yes. manufacturing ha bolo modulation resolution support hobe na oi ta tumra ni dekhe pore nite parbo ejonno ami skip kore gelam modulus of resilience ta age ami bole diyechi ota tumra nijera pore ni kichu kichu ami skip kore gechi tumra nijera pore nebe oglo bojhonar moto kichu kichu thik ache so here are a wide range of materials that are depending on the different types the mostly see idea is that when the material is brittle the material is brittle like ceramic materials and glass like that so you have got a low toughness comparatively low toughness and you have got a high strength you see we have and on the other hand suppose you take the composite material composite material as you have already seen that we say combination of so many materials so we want more strength as well as more toughness so we can develop certain materials but within metals and alloys itself we can have the uh, you know strength higher strength and higher toughness so this is some sort of guideline to select a particular type of material on the basis of strength and toughness what will be my requirement design requirement depending on that you can select so this is this slide is to give you some idea next is the torsion test torsion test i don't know whether you will perform here in your lab or not but it is basically applying certain torque on the material to see its resistance or its uh, you know fracture when it gets fractured like that so here you will apply the torque on the material the shape of this specimen is something like this there will be a test specimen something like that and torque will be applied and uh, the stress strain diagram will be similar to that we have already discussed so torsion test is uh, i don't know is that in our lab the facility is there or not because it is uh, less used not that extensively used because most often uh, most often used in soil test compressive test then impact strength test uh in some areas of course it is required but i don't know whether in our lab it is there the specialty is there or not next important thing this is very important fatigue let us discuss it slightly detail fatigue because most of the devices mechanical devices uh, will work under dynamic condition and i have already told you that when there is a dynamic loading fatic failure occurs so it has been observed or it has been recognized that a metal metal is subjected to a repetitive or fluctuating stress will fail at a stress much lower than the required to cause failure on a single application of load this is very important so say for example roughly i say suppose a material fails at say 100 kilo newton of load constant load the same material may fail at let us say only 10 kilo newton of load when the load is fluctuating so case is something like that so the material may fail at a much lower value when the load is varying or fluctuating so that is the idea so wherever there is a fluctuating load the design of the component is to be properly done considering the
fatigue strength of the material now fatigue failure is characterized by three stages how the fatigue failure takes place we have got the three different stages one is crack initiation next step is crack propagation and final fracture so this is the three stages by which fatigue failure takes place but let us try to understand the some more idea here so this is same point written here now first point is which has been shown uh, or told you that a crack initiation and propagation crack initiation for the both the points are written first stage second stage crack initiation you see where the crack of the material when fluctuating load is applied where the crack will initiate which are the prominent points so crack initiation areas are those areas which have stress concentration or that means stress concentration mm -hmm. that means there these stress concentration areas are called the stress ridges so first point there if there are certain small scratches or small you know defects on the surface so those are some of the points where the crack may initiate now when the material is vibrating or very uh, uh, under dynamic condition that small crack what will happen that crack will uh you know there will be certain incremental propagation so crack, uh, crack will increase slowly it will slowly increase and there will be a certain point uh where there will be failure so final rapid crack propagation will be there after crack reaches the critical size once it has reached the critical size then the failure will take place so the total number of cycles to failure this nf indicates the cycles to failure so crack uh, you have got two uh, stages the so crack initiation stage the number of cycles during the initial stage and number of cycles uh, till the failure which is called the propagation stage so total number of cycles is called the uh, number of cycles of failure now here is the very important concept you should uh, try to understand here the and of course this will be discussed in your design subject a bit detail but just to give you some introduction uh so this is the same concept so this is the type of fluctuating load you know there will be uh, a fully reverse load, load that means if this type of load is there then there will be a tensile stress as well as compressive stress tensile stress as well as compressive stress fully reversed and here cyclic load is there but only tensile in nature tensile in nature it is fluctuating but tensile in nature it is not negative so tensile uh, fluctuating load there can be also repeated loading something like that so there is a concept uh, you know concept like alternating stress mean stress considering all these ideas you have to design the component for fatigue strength now how the fatigue test is carried out fatigue test is carried out by a rotating beam fatigue test you see there is a device here where we have placed a component and of course there will be load here which has not been shown so a method of for determining the behavior of materials under fluctuating load which is known as fatigue test this can be performed as constant or variable amplitude ex excitation we get the required excitation and then we measure some parameters here so normally these two types of tests are carried out it is this the first one rotating beam fatigue test has been shown here so what is done here just see this is the specimen this is the specimen and uh, this specimen geometry has got certain dimensions and then here we apply certain load on the specimen to you know give certain stress now point is that when this specimen rotates 
when the specimen rotates the upper portion and lower portion of the material of the beam of the specimen actually gets tensile stress stress as well as compressive stress so that is why we are applying that is how we are applying the cyclic loading on the specimen so it has been found that the after application of certain number of load you know, cyclic cycles the materials actually fails the material fails or the specimen fails that is to be observed so this is the idea of the experiment what is done here is that the specimen is held here and it is rotated it is rotated after application of certain load it is rotated and what is observed is that after how many cycles after how many cycles it fails so that is how the experiment is done now here is a very very important diagram here is a very very important diagram the explanation of the diagram should be understood to understand the fatigue failure this diagram is called the s n curve this diagram is called the s n curve s indicates the stress n indicates the number of cycles to failure number of cycles to failure i am repeating s indicates the stress n indicates the number of cycles till failure now if we take a certain component any uh, material it can be mild steel it can be aluminum or any any alloy alloying uh, material and we perform the experiment the nature of the graph nature of the graph will be something like that see these are all dots or small circles are all experimental points all experimental points so what has been done is that suppose we have taken a certain stress let us say here in some unit 120 120 at this particular load the material fails you know at single cycle or let us say without a much number of cycles it fails now what we have done let us say we are applying a stress of 80 and we are putting the specimen under cyclic loading this is a constant stress which is varying and we find that the material fails after let us say 10 to the power 3 and let us say 10 to the power 4 so let us say after 1000 no it will be more than that it is 10000 uh, and it is 10000 let us say after 3000 or 4 5000 cycles so point to be understood is that when you have applied a constant load say 120 then the material fails at once without just in one cycle but when you have applied say 80 uh, you know value some value of stress it is failing after 5000 cycles you have further lowered let us say you have applied 60 uh, some value of uh, stress then it is failing after say you know 1 lakh of cycles so it is you know increasing in a very much very higher order one lakh of cycles so like that you no know, we can have a plot what is this plot this plot is s versus n plot the applied stress versus number of cycles then what will happen this lines you know it is something like this this line will have some smaller slope then repeat slope and finally it will be horizontal what is the significance of this is that this is sigma uh, this is this 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 stress this stress is denoted as endurance limit of the specimen endurance limit of the specimen denoted by s e dash what is the significance of this significance of this is that suppose i consider that this is 50 roughly this is 50 so if you apply a stress 
below 50, let us see you are applying 40 stress, then because of the cyclic loading, the material will not fail. The material will not fail because it is lower than its endurance limit. So, endurance, endurance limit of this specimen indicates the lowest value of the stress, lowest value of the stress for which the material will not fail for cyclic loading. Actually, experimentally, when you are talking about the fatigue analysis and fatigue strain, we try to find out the endurance strain of the material so that we can design the material or we can say that the material should not be loaded beyond this particular stress and then material will you know survive or uh, it will not fail because of that particular application of load so this is the idea of fatigue strength or uh, endurance limit this is actually called the fatigue strength also this is technically it is known as endurance limit and endurance limit is you know a very very important you know stress which is evaluated experimentally and for different materials these endurance limit values are given it is already determined for uh, some standard materials if some materials are new newly developed materials and definitely we must have to determine the endurance limit of the material so SN diagram is a very very important it has got different parts different features i have not discussed in detail so you can see these diagrams can be divided into different parts like so cycle, low cycle region, high cycle region. Then this is a point, say 10 to the power 6, that means 10 lakh cycle. If a material, for this material, it survives here, 10 lakh cycle, cycle. So if this is a point where we are getting the endurance limit, so here we divide these two regions, finite life region and finite life region. That means if we apply a stress below 50 of stress, then the material will survive for infinite period. So that is why it is called infinite life of the material. So in summary, what is what can be said is that the main purpose of fatigue failure analysis or SN car analysis is to determine the endurance limit. Of course, there are certain, certain other diagrams, modified diagrams, Goodman's diagram, modified Goodman's diagram, etc. And this can be used to determine the, to design the uh, particular component. This will be done in detail. Definitely, it will be done in detail in your machine design class. So, just be acquainted with the SN diagram and its significance. That's all I want to tell. So, another point we are coming after. Uh, sir, uh, sir, uh, sir, okay, uh, sir, 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 Creep, we have already uh, discussed that creep is a phenomenon which depends on, you know, time. So, when you are applying a constant stress, constant stress on a piece of material and keep it for long time, you know, there may be some strain in the material, some deformation in the material. This is the idea. So, creep, see, this is called the uh, creep car. How it looks like, see, in this here we are taking, you know, creep measurement in terms of deformation and it is temperature. So, in this y axis we are taking the percentage of creep means it is deformation and in x axis we are taking the time. So, some idea this is the initially the rate is more in you know, a creep rate is more and finally there will be a, another zone and finally the rapid increase will be there. Some more graphs are there it will be clear. Now, what is done here in creep test, artificially we can know what is the creep. What is done is that here is a specimen, 
there is a specimen and uh, a constant stress is applied here and the strain developed within that is actually determined so this is a typical creep test this graph is important so what happens is that initially there can be when just we have applied some load there can be some instantaneous deformation so in the y axis we are taking this strain basically because of creep so it is called the creep strain in x axis is a time so it has got three important region one is called primary creep secondary creep and tertiary creep so initial region when you have got the rapid change or increase in uh, you know creep strain it is called the primary region then you have got the more or less constant rate of change in strain secondary and finally the tertiary so this is the three different stages now creep also is affected by temperature if your temperature is more in a specimen then obviously the strain will be more because the material becomes comparatively softer but if the material at if it is at uh, room temperature and below that temperature below the uh, melting temperature is less than 0.4 of melting temperature then actually creep will not be that significant so in creep apart from time another important parameter is temperature so those components of devices which are you know functioning under higher temperature they are this creep phenomena is very important so for designing the component the creep idea of creep and creep strain strain are to be taken into consideration so i will send you this material if you are interested to see i will just has a picture of the other one eta ami pathiye debo tumra baki jinish gulo dekhe niyo aro kichu ache bengali te ache gulo tumra porle bujhte parbe ami eigulo ke ar khub beshi e korchi na viscoelasticity viscosity ar ekta ar ekta important idea ache seta hocche ki viscoelastic property viscoelastic property mane viscosity and elasticity combine kore ki hocche viscoelastic এটা তোমরা একটু দেখে নিও ইফ ইউ नीड सम ক্লারিফিকেশন আই ক্যান এক্সপ্লেইন ইট মানে স্যার আজকে ম্যাটেরিয়াল প্রপার্টি অফ মেটালস আর স্ট্যাটিক এই দুটো টপিক শেষ হলো আর কি তাই তো হ্যাঁ এর মধ্যে সবগুলাই আছে ভিসকুলেস্টিক প্রপার্টি ওর মধ্যে লাগে এটাকে একটু তোমরা দেখে নিও ঠিক আছে আমি এটাকে পাঠিয়ে দেব যদি পরে কোনো কিছু ক্লারিফিকেশন দরকার ওকে ঠিক আছে তাহলে আজকে আমরা এখানে স্টপ করছি হ্যাঁ স্যার थैंक यू सर ओके थैंक यू सर प्रथम